In this lecture, we are going to look at the four strategies. You have two options, calls and puts, and you can either buy uh, them or you can sell them. So you have a total of four strategies and in the earlier course, you did see a four strategies box. So two out of these four strategies are bullish and two out of the four strategies are bearish. So what we have to do when we want to decide a particular strategy is if you're going to use single options, then you can either buy a call, sell a call, buy a put or sell a put. Again, I do want to mention that you never sell a naked call or a naked put. If you were going to assume that kind of a position, you would sell it as a spread. But for the sake of discussion here, let's just assume that we are talking about these four options that whenever we talk of selling a call or selling a put, we are actually talking of selling it as a spread rather than a single option. So that's going to be the philosophy of, uh, for this lecture. And let's say we are bullish on Apple. So here we come, we've got the March series. And if we are bullish on Apple, then we want to buy an Apple call. And I think I may have one right here. Yeah, we've got the 500 call, but instead of selling it, we want to buy it. So we want to buy the 500 call and we're going to pay uh, a premium of $2.64 for that particular option. We want to buy 10 contracts, which is about 1,000 shares. And our buying power for that particular strategy is 2,640. So now let's look at the risk profile. So once we look at the risk profile, we can see that this is a long call. So our maximum loss here is going to be 2,640. That would be anything below the strike price of 500 on the day of expiry. And then if you look at the white line and the red line, we have unlimited profits to the upside. If we wanted a bullish strategy, there's also another way of putting a bullish strategy. So remember from the four strategies box, you have one bullish strategy using calls, which is this one, the long call. And then you have one bullish strategy using puts, which is the short put. So let's now look at the short put and see why that is also another bullish trade. So if we take a short put, um, let's say we're taking the same one at 425 and we sell this uh, put. So if we look at our trade ticket, what we have is a sell of the 10 contracts of the March 425 put and we're going to receive a premium of 2.48 per share. But you can see that I'm going to take off this long call because we don't want to simulate that. If we just had this short put, then we can see that we have a margin of $57,000. And let's look at the risk profile of the short put. So if we look at the risk profile of the short put, you can see that it's a bullish trade. It's a bullish trade because if Apple goes up, then this trade makes money. And you can also know that it's a bullish trade by looking at the Greeks. But let's look at the Greeks uh, of both these positions. So on the short put, you can see it's a positive delta. So that itself tells you that it's a bullish trade. You have negative gamma because you're selling options. Whenever you're selling options, remember, you don't want movement. You want uh, the stock to be stable. So whenever you have negative gamma, you have to uh, think that you don't want movement. And in this case, you don't want movement. Well, you know, you don't mind movement to the upside, but the negative gamma tells you that if the position uh, moves too much against you, then you're going to get into trouble. So that's what the negative gamma tells you. Now you're going to be theta positive. So you're a seller of an option. So you're going to be theta positive. So every day, this position is going to make $145. So that's a positive. Uh, that's, a, that's a plus point rather. And you have negative vega. So whenever you sell a, an, an option, whether it's a single option or a spread, you're going to have negative vega. So now what we're going to do is look at the other bullish position, which is the long call. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck the short put 
and we're going to simulate the long call. So the long call, you can see again, it's a positive delta. Whenever you have positive delta, you're a, you have a bullish position. But this time you have positive gamma, which means you want movement. You want movement and especially in your direction. But your negative theta, so you're going to lose $149 per day on this particular position and your positive vega. So you can see that these three Greeks, the gamma, theta and vega are exactly opposite for both these positions. So let's uh, see that again. Let's, uh, I'm going to check the short put and check off the, uh, the long call. Uh, in the long call, I, I, I mean in the short put, you have positive delta. So both of these are positive delta. So they are both bullish positions. But the gamma is, is inverted, the theta is inverted and the vega is also inverted. So what this means is you have to decide whether uh, in addition to being positive delta, whether you want to be at the theta positive uh, position or you want to be a theta negative. So basically the question you're asking yourself is should I, should time decay work in my favor or should it be working against me? And similarly, that goes for Vega also. Do you want a Vega negative position or do you want a Vega positive position? How do you know whether you want a ne Vega negative position or you want a Vega positive position? Well, that depends on the implied volatility of this particular option and whether the implied volatility is high or is it low? Because if it is already high, then you're better off with a Vega negative position because you're going to benefit if volatility comes down after you've gotten into this position. Whereas if volatility is low, then you want a positive Vega position because you expect or you want volatility to increase after you've put on this position. So that is as far as Vega is concerned. As far as theta is concerned, um, you have to decide, do you want to be a theta positive or a theta negative position? Uh, and whatever you decide between these two will, will actually be the deciding factor for gamma. So if you choose to go long, then gamma is going to be positive. If you choose to go short, then gamma is going to be negative. But you don't make your choice based on gamma. What you do is you make your choice based on theta and vega. Uh, whether you want to be a seller of options, whether you want to be a buyer of options, whether you want to be a seller of premium, or you want to be a buyer of premium, whether you want to be a seller of volatility or you want to be a buyer of volatility. So when we say you want to be a buyer of volatility, basically you're taking a position where you think volatility is going to increase. So that's why that's when you buy volatility. And when you're buying volatility, basically you're going in for the long option because uh, that is a positive Vega position. And finally, and certainly not the least uh, by any measure is the issue of margins. You can see that the margins in a short put far, far outweigh the margins in a long call. But again, when we say short put, we are talking, uh, we're talking about a short spread also. When you put it, when you put the short put as a spread, your margin is going to come down significantly. So you really don't have to worry too much about the margin, but what you do have to worry about is the risks on the downside. So that's, a, that's how you would weigh these two option strategies uh, you know, between a long call and a short put because both of these are bullish strategies. Both of them have a positive delta and they're both bullish but the other three Greeks are going to be exactly the reverse uh, from each other. Now we're going to look at the two bearish positions. So when you want to take up a bearish position, what you can obviously do is to buy a long put. So let's say we have the 430 put and you can buy 10 contracts of the 430 put. Uh, you'll see that you have a negative delta right away. So whenever you have a negative delta, you have a bearish position. But since you're a buyer of options, you have a positive gamma. Uh, you have a gamma of 7.6 and uh, that's positive gamma. So for every $1 that Apple um, goes down, your, your deltas are going to increase on the negative side by $7.60. So for 
let's say Apple is at 460, if it goes down to 459, it'll be minus 185 approximately. So because as the stock is going down, your delta is going to increase because your short options delta is now going to, uh, is, is going to increase. So uh, you want the stock to go down and because you're a buyer of options, uh, you're going to have a negative theta. So on this particular long put, you're going to lose $164 per day from time decay. But you have a positive Vega position, which means if volatility goes up, then uh, by 1%, your position is going to gain by $332. So, you know, we saw all the Greeks as decimal points, but whenever you put a position, you always have to look at the position Greeks. And because this tells you in absolute dollars how your position is going to fare for a $1 increase or a $1 decrease uh, in, the, in the value of the, in the price of the underlying stock. So this is as far as the long put is concerned. The other bearish position is the short call. So let's go and try to put a short call on uh, Apple, we'll go back to our 500 uh, 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 series and what we'll do is we'll try to sell 10 contracts of the 500 call. We'll get a premium of $2.62, but you can see that your margin, in fact, I'm gonna take off this. Um, you can see that your margin is $52,000. So that's a pretty big margin. And if you look at the risk profile, that's exactly what it is. You know, the, by looking at this risk profile also, you know, that this is a bearish position because you, your, your position actually makes money as Apple goes down. But just like you had the short put, in the short call, you're going to see negative gamma, you're going to see positive theta, which is time decay is in your favor because you're selling an option, you're, you're, you've taken the position of a seller, and you have negative vega. So you want volatility to come down. If volatility comes down by 1%, your position is going to increase in value by $299. But again, it's the same considerations between, a, um, between, the, between these two strategies and the first two that we saw, you know, whether you want to be theta positive or theta negative. If volatility is high, then perhaps you want to be in, in a Vega negative uh, in a situation. Of course, granting that you know you would have put this as a spread, uh, you would still want to, want it to be a Vega negative position and a theta positive. But if volatility is low and you think it might increase, then maybe you're better off with this kind of a position, where you know this is obviously a bearish position. As Apple goes down, uh, your position is going to make a profit uh, from a long put. So these are the four basic strategies. And your primary determinant for which strategy you know, to use is going to be based upon a big criterion would be Vega, whether the volatility of the current environment is high, low or average. And if it is high, then you want to be a seller of options. And of course, you would sell it as a spread rather than a single option. If the volatility is high, then you may be better off selling a uh, call spread if you want to go bearish uh, or uh, if the volatility is high then you, you may be better off selling a put spread but if volatility is low then uh, you may be better off buying the long options rather than uh, selling the spread and of course if you're buying the options so if you're buying the, uh, the long put or the long call you've got to give enough uh, enough of a uh, of time for it to work out and also to reduce your time decay. So if you were going to buy this 430 call, rather than go to March, which has only about 27 days, I would probably either go to April or to May. So if you can look at the theta number, and if we go to May, you can see that the theta reduces um, from one, let me see, what is it? $165 a day to one, um, to $134 a day. So that's a big difference. And bear in mind, if you do the March, then from 164, tomorrow it might be 170, the day after it might be 180. Or, you know, this number is going to become exponential. So that's the, uh, you know, that's the, uh, that's the issue. So if you're going to buy long options, you want much more time, maybe 60 days, maybe 90 days, 
Whereas if you're going to go with the short spread, then you, you're better off with doing it in, in about 27 days. Now, you know, you could say you, you want to go, even if, you know, if there were weekly options, and they, and they certainly are, um, you could go to the 20 days, you'll get even faster time decay. But bear in mind, you also have to match up how much premium you receive for your spread, for your short spread. Because if you look at the March series and uh, we look at the five, uh, the 430, uh, you know, you're going to get about $3.20. But let's look at the the, the March to, uh, 20 with, with 20 days, uh, the weekly series which has 20 days and look at the 430. You're getting only $2.30 as premium. So you can come close, you'll get a much higher time decay, but you're going to compromise on the premium. So the, the reward for taking this risk is going to become lesser as you come closer to expiry. So, you know, it's a, it's a balance. Um, so what do you do? What is the sweet spot? I think if you want to sell options, the sweet spot really is, a, is around 30 days because 30 days gives you enough premium and at the same time, time decay is just beginning to become exponential, uh, uh, you know, in nature. So 30 days, 35 days, maybe even 40 days, uh, but somewhere between 30 days and 45 days is probably your ideal time if you want to be a seller of options because you're going to see some nice time decay and at the same time, the options still have some premium left in them. They still have some juice in them because at the end of the day, your max profit whenever you sell, whether you sell a single option or whether you sell a spread, your max profit is going to be the premium that you receive for that uh, for that deal. So you have to balance these two things out. On the other hand, if you were a buyer of options, then you're going to go much longer. You're going to go 60 days, perhaps even 90 days. Uh, you're able to reduce your time decay and you're also able to uh, give yourself a little bit more time. But what's the negative with that strategy? The negative with that kind of a strategy is, first of all, you're going to pay more for these options. So let's look at the single uh, 10 contracts of the March 430 put. If you were to buy that put, uh, you would pay $3.35. That is in March. But if you go to the April series and uh, or the May series, you look at the same 430 put, you're going to pay $13.75 in May. Okay, so that's $13.75. And let's look at April, and in April, you're going to pay um, for the 430, you're going to pay almost $8.20. So obviously, you know, you're going to pay a lot more if you go out, but it's a more safer strategy. It gives you less time decay, and at the same time, it gives you enough time for the trade to play out. So that's that's so those are the considerations that you have to give. They're, in terms of delta, both of these strategies are the same. They're they're both delta negative, and you know there might be a little bit of a difference between the two uh, deltas, but that's fine. I mean you're basically going to get the same uh, profit if the move happens in your direction. So delta is not really the uh, the criterion for this kind of a trade. The 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 real criterion are the the theta and the vega. Whether you want to be theta negative or theta positive, or whether you want to be vega negative and vega positive. So whenever you have theta negative, you're going to be vega positive, And whenever you're going to be theta positive, you're going to be vega negative. So these two things are uh, opposite of each other, but they actually decide what strategy you need to put out of these four. And so in the, in, in the next course, you're going to see the uh, uh, spreads coming in. And that's where all of this stuff really becomes critical. It's uh, it's great. To, I think uh, spreads are the way to go. Make sure you master how spreads work because uh, those are really the bread and butter trades in the options uh, trading playbook. But before we go there, we still have a little bit of ground to cover in this course and we'll take take those up in the next few lectures. Thank you.